So in this video, I just want to recap some of the things we've learned about the Lagrangian method. So the first thing to remember about the Lagrangian is that the results you get by using the method are always the same as you would have gotten if you used Newton's second law. So it's not really a different theory, it's just a different way of looking at the same physical phenomenon. And we even saw that the, the workhorse equation for the Lagrangian method, the Euler-Lagrange formula, right? I'll write it down, dl dx ddt full derivative, um, and then the partial of l with respect to x dot equals zero, right? So this difference equals zero. So the Euler-Lagrange formula, the workhorse equation for the Lagrangian method, if we're in rectangular coordinates, so if we're in rectangular coordinates, rect chords, uh, if we're in rectangular coordinates, this actually turns into Newton's second law. Right, so the first term is F, and then the second term is the mass times acceleration, and this equals zero, or F equals MA. So that's in rectangular coordinates, this Euler-Lagrange formula actually is the same thing as Newton's second law. So the main advantage of using the Lagrangian is that it focuses on energy. Focuses on energy, so energy. Write down energy. Well, the Newtonian way, the Newton's second law way of doing things, energy, is focused on forces, so forces. Right, and why is energy more useful than a force? Well, the main difference is that energy is a scalar energy is a scalar, right? And then forces, forces are vectors. Forces are vectors. So usually it's easier to write down the energy for a system than it is to write down the forces, especially uh, in, in a more complicated problem. It's sometimes difficult to find the forces. And we saw that if we use the method of undetermined multipliers, we can sometimes even get forces that we didn't necessarily know right away by, by writing down the energy and using the method of undetermined multipliers uh, with the Lagrangian. So even if we do know the forces, oftentimes rectangular coordinates aren't the most convenient coordinate system for a problem. And if that's the case, then we can write down the forces and the energy both in rectangular coordinates, but then transforming them into the more convenient coordinate system, maybe, maybe they're cylindrical coordinates or, or any other coordinate system, transforming these forces because they're vectors is actually a lot harder than it is to transform just the scalar energy. And that's one reason why you might want to use energy and the Lagrangian instead of using forces and Newton's second law. But I think an even cooler reason is that for things outside of classical mechanics, things like quantum mechanics, quantum and relativity, quantum and relativity, right? E equals mc squared, relativity. Energy is still a very, very useful thing in quantum mechanics and relativity. And even in relativistic quantum mechanics, energy is still a very central idea. Well, forces, forces aren't really useful outside of, of, of rectangular coordinates in classical physics. Force really doesn't even have a real meaning inside quantum mechanics. And, and relativity, it, it can still be used, but it's still not nearly as useful as the idea of energy. And speaking of non-classical physics, in the next video and, and, and maybe the next few videos, we're going to talk about the Hamiltonian, the Hamiltonian, which is very related, very related, Hamiltonian, very related to the Lagrangian, but it actually has another advantage over the Lagrangian for these non-classical things. And, and we'll deal with that in the next video.